the moment you've all been waiting for, the return of Happy Jack. Hello, everyone. Trust the Prophets. I'm the Formula here to talk to you about the Jerk and Stakes preview. We are um, coming at you on the 24th. This is before we've had the draw for the Jerkins. If it's come out today, I haven't seen it yet. So I'm going off of just the possible contenders, the probable field as of 824, the morning of 824. So the race is going to be August 27th at Saratoga. It's a G1 stakes race, seven furlongs on dirt. Any jockeys that I mention are jockeys that have been historically paired with said horses as I go through them. Uh, they may not be the jockeys that are racing with those horses on that day. Let's get started. Who are we going to start with? We are starting at the top. Jack Christopher, third in the Haskell, uh, finishing two lengths behind Cyberknife and Taiba, or Taiba. First time in five races this horse has not won. Pretty much perfect up to that point. Previously, winning the Woody Stevens by 10 lengths over Papa Cap. You'll see Papa Cap come up in these uh, previous performances a lot. He's beaten Papa Cap several times. Um, also coming in for the Pat Day Mile, Champagne Stakes. Big question for this horse is, can he be dominant at a two-turn race uh, in the same way that he is at a one-turn race? But luckily, this is a seven-furlong race that sets up really well for Jack Christopher. I have a feeling that he will be the probable favorite, the probable winner. Odds on him will probably be below one, unfortunately. But this is your horse right here. This is your number one horse, Jack Christopher, without a doubt. What's interesting is going to be, who is below him? Let's go through the probable twos and threes here now. Gunite, the winner of the Amsterdam, clocking in a 115, six and a half furlong, and winner of the Maxfield Stakes as well, enjoying some success at Saratoga. Obviously, the Amsterdam, also the hopeful stakes winner. Saratoga Special came in a close second there, likely to finish in the money, has been on the rise the past few races for Gunite, definitely a, a top consideration. Accretive. So in this picture, you'll see here Gunite and Accretive because that's how close they were at the Amsterdam Stakes. Uh, Gunite beat him just by a head. Accretive looked really good. Probably didn't get the best, the best trip during that race. Got held up a little bit early on, but really closed down nicely on Gunite. This next race up, could this be the race where he actually does close that distance? We'll see. Broke his maiden first time out. Five, six lengths ahead of the rest of the pack. So this is a pretty impressive Chad Brown horse. Holland time. So we've heard Holland time, especially on the Derby Trail, a number of times. Came out the Haskell, finished fourth. Previous to that was second, losing just by a nose in the Matt win to Cyberknife. So this is a horse that's been up against some superior competition, also some superior distances. Um, also up and down, right? So look good at times, often fails to rise to the occasion when it comes to some of the big races, such as the Lexington, the Fountain of Youth. This field, though, could suit him. It is a step down from what he's seen before, aside from Jack Christopher, of course. Uh, he doesn't have to face off against Cyberknife here or or any of those other horses that he's seen. Possible pace setter, too. We've seen uh, Howling, Howling Time come out and set the pace in a number of previous races. The interesting thing here is, is how does he comp on a seven for a long race? I've seen him do distance the past few times out. So I'll be curious to see how uh, Dale Romans has him prepared for this one. Witty, uh, I've got Witty in here, but as you'll see in my one of my later notes, I have a feeling he's going to be scratched. Very likely he's going to be scratched simply because he did run in the Smarty Jones just five days before the Jerkins. I wouldn't expect to see him in there. And for that reason, if he does race, I would not put him in my top three. This is a horse that looks great outside of uh, graded stakes races and outside of distance, which is what he ran in the Smarty Jones in the Penn Mile. If he stays at around six furlongs, this looks like a horse that come in first or second, pretty much all of his races. But I also worry about whether he can sustain races in with heavy competition like we're going to see in this race. Conagher. So I put him as below the radar. Um, I have a feeling with the other horses that we just talked about, Conagher may not get great odds, which is, which is going to be perfect because I, I really do like this horse a lot. Uh, beat Gunite in seven seven furlong allowance race at Churchill in June by five plus lengths. So that's interesting to note here because Gunite might be one of the uh, favorites below Jack Christopher. Conagher has beaten him in the past. I'm curious to see how the odds shake out on this. 
Also, the lone second place for Conagher was um, the Iowa Derby loss that he had an eight and a half furlong race. Stayed on the pace for a while, had first place for a little while, ended up losing, gave it up to Ain't Life Grand by about one length. This has been a pretty impressive horse so far. Hasn't gotten, uh, hasn't gotten really the publicity. Hasn't really raced in the huge races up to this point. But I do like the times that I've seen on him. I'm I'm gonna try to work Conagher into a, a ticket somehow here along with Actuator. So another below the radar horse here. Actuator struggled to break his maiden the first time, first couple times out in Indiana. Looked like a red flag, but um, those were both on turf. Ever since he's been racing on dirt, he's been looking like a winner. Winner of the Indiana Derby, G3 race, running a 144, eight and a half furlong. Previous to that, if you want to look at seven furlongs, he, he had a 121 destroying the rest of the field at Churchill Downs. So this is a horse. Um, I think the distance sets up well for him. McCarthy's the trainer. James Graham is the the jockey. I kind of like this horse too. I'm going to figure out a way to get them in there and I'll show you how in a second. Let's just go through the rest of the field here. So Happy Jack. Happy Jack, for, for those of you who know, um, has raced in a number of huge races, Kentucky Derby and Preakness. Always looks like a bottom 10% horse uh, and also ran um, thanks for coming out and participating type horse he's looked better in the last couple races hasn't raced to the nearly the the level that we've just talked about with kentucky derby and preakness but um i have a feeling in this in this group here he's going to be outmatched obviously jack christopher is gonna uh yeah exactly Run in son of a gun, ran in third at the Amsterdam, was four lengths behind. Um, I don't think he's going to factor in here. Looked like a good horse, uh, but I just don't think that he's uh, really worth noting here. So finally, what's my strategy here? Well, Jack Christopher to win, that's an easy one. I don't think you're going to get a good price on him here. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off at like two to five, three to five. I don't know who's going to take the money away from him in terms of win. Maybe someone looking for uh, one of the other four or five horses that we just talked about to take his place. I don't know who you're going to make an argument for in that crowd. But what's interesting to me here is uh, looking to do a trifecta, keying in on Jack Christopher and then pairing him with some combination of uh, Conagher, Actuator, and either Gunite, Accretive, or Howling Time. I, I'm falling back on Gunite here. Uh, I think Gunite, odds on him, are probably not going to be outstanding. But what I'm really looking for in this ticket is I do like Actuator and Conagher. I have a feeling, and again, this is purely based on how the odds are going to fall out. I have a feeling they're going to get worse odds than Accretive, Howling Time, and Gunite. So I want to pair one of them in, Gunite with the two that I think are going to have worse odds in hopes that there could be some sort of notable payback on what I think is, is could potentially happen here. Right. I, I have great feeling about Conagher and actuator. Uh, call me crazy in the comments, call me nuts. Uh, let me know what you think below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you as always for joining. Let me, let me remove this here and uh, please check out the rest of the videos that we have. Obviously we've been doing videos on, um, the Travers Stakes coming up. We've got a lot of videos on that. Check out the rest of our content on Trust the Profits on YouTube. Thank you for joining.